Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert, answering your ProtoPy questions. Today's question comes from Margo. Margo asks, I have a form and I would like the submit button to only be enabled when two mandatory checkboxes are checked. This is a common thing you might want to do with forms, and I'm going to show you how to do this with a complex condition. In my Pi, I have a very simple form set up. This is a fictitious uh, pharmacy company where you can get your prescriptions online. And let's say this is the last step in a registration process. The idea is we want to check these two checkboxes and then jump to the final step. All done, that kind of thing. However, we don't want this submit button. You can see I can just click it and it goes on to the next step. We don't want the submit button to be enabled until both of these checkboxes are checked. So let's set that up. And if you want to see how I've done these checkboxes, by the way, they're very simple. I've got two pieces in here. I've got the base, which is the square, and then I've got a check, which I've got set to opacity zero. And you can see if I turn that up, it's up to, to zero. When you click the outer container, it checks to see what the opacity is on the check icon itself. So if it's zero, sets it to 100. And if it's 100, sets it to zero. So it's just a very simple on off kind of thing. What we're going to do is we're going to test to see if both those are set to 100. But the first thing we want to do is we want to set this up in its initial state. We want the submit button to be disabled. So let's give it a disabled state. I'm going to change its color. So it has a background color of this purple. Let's give it a gray color here. That looks disabled. Okay, now when I preview this, the problem is if I click it, you can see it's still going on to the second scene. So how do we make it so that way this button is not clickable? We could use a condition on the click, but I'm gonna do something a little bit simpler. Let's take a shape. I'm gonna put a rectangle right over top of this. And what I wanna do is uh, we're gonna make it invisible. And you might think to make it invisible, I would set the opacity down to zero like this. And you're gonna see I have make lower layers touchable. I have that unchecked. And essentially what that does is it doesn't allow me, when you tap it, it doesn't allow the event to go through. But because I've set this opacity to zero, essentially that makes it invisible to protopy. And we don't want that. So you're gonna see that I can still go on to the, to the next scene here. So instead of making it invisible, I'm gonna turn the opacity up to 100. I'm just gonna remove the fill. And I can do that by just checking this box right here. And now you're gonna see Okay, I can't click that submit button. Let's make the submit button a little bit more uh, disabled looking here. So let's change its opacity to say 50. There we go, that looks very disabled. So now you're gonna see, I can't click the button. Now what I wanna do is I wanna set this up. So if I check both of these boxes, it's going to put our submit button back into its enabled state. It's going to remove that invisible box that is stopping the click, and it's gonna allow us to go on to the second scene. Let's set up our logic for this. What I want to do is whenever this checkbox is tapped, or actually when the checkbox's opacity changes, let's put a detect on this check one icon. Add trigger, detect, select. We're going to do check one. And I want to look for its opacity. Here's where I'm going to make a condition with multiple tests. Usually we just test for one thing. Is the opacity 100 or is it zero? Uh, is something on? Is it in a position? What I'm going to do is I'm going to check for if check one's opacity equals 100. And then what I'd like to do is add a second one underneath here. And I don't know if you've noticed here before, there's a plus underneath your set of tests here. And you can add multiple in here. So I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to look for check two's opacity equals 100. The way ProtoPy works, both of these have to be true for whatever response you put under the condition to, to fire. If only one of these is true, then the condition won't fire. But what I'm gonna do here is, if both of these are 100%, then what we can do now is let's, let's put our submit button into its active state. So we are going to um, change the opacity of the button. We'll go to the submit button, we'll put the opacity to 100, and let's give the color of it, we'll give the fill of the submit button, not the text, but uh, where you fill, and we'll give it this nice purple color. And we need to uh, remove this rectangle. Now, you remember the first demo I showed you when I set the rectangle's opacity, it allowed the click to go through. So, what we'll do is we'll actually set the rectangle's opacity to zero. So, opacity of rectangle one, and let's call this uh, click mask. So it makes a little bit more sense here. We're gonna set the opacity 
of the click mask to zero. And now if I check this first one, you're gonna see uh, nothing happened yet because it fired on the first one and both of them weren't checked when the first one fired. But if I do it in this opposite order, check the second one first and check the first one, our submit button becomes available. So it's kind of working, but we need to make it a little bit smarter now. We need to do the same test on the second check button. So let's copy this. I'm gonna duplicate this detect and instead of detecting the opacity of check one, I'm gonna detect the opacity of check two. All right, now let's preview this. And if I click the first one, nothing happens. I click the second one, my submit button becomes available, right? Beautiful, kind of working. But what happens if I check the first one, I check the second one, my submit button becomes available, and then I uncheck the first one. I would expect my submit button to go back to its disabled state. What we haven't done is a test for uh, whether or not the buttons are unchecked. Now, all we care about is if either of these are unchecked. We don't have to test if both of these are unchecked. We just have to test if either of these are. So we're going to add two more conditions. This was the detect on check one, by the way. So let's add this here. We're going to add uh, a condition. And we're going to look for is check one's opacity zero. And then I'm going to add another condition for check two. If check two's opacity is zero. And then I'm going to put everything back. Now you're going to see what's going to happen here. So let's say I copy these and I paste this under here and let's put these, uh, let's put the opacity to 50%. That's the check button. The color will go back to that gray color. That's I think that one right there. And the opacity of our click mask, we want that back to 100%. You're going to see, I'm going to have to duplicate this three more times. So I'm going to take these and I can duplicate this here. And then I could take these and I can duplicate it here. And this will work, this will work just fine. And if I preview this, I check it once, check twice. There we go, the submit button is available. Now if I uncheck number two, I can't click submit. And if I uncheck number one, I can't check submit. All right, this is all great and this works. This does exactly what we want. However, you can see our logic is a little messy over here. I've duplicated my work. And the problem is if I wanna change what the selected state is, or sorry, the active state of the submit button or the inactive state, um, I have to change it in multiple places. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a smarter way to do this. Let's use a variable to keep track of whether the form is ready to submit. So I'm gonna add a variable and that's in the bottom left. One click will expand your variables palette and I'm gonna click the plus button. And this is just for this scene. I don't care about using it in any other scene. So I'm gonna choose for this scene. And I'm gonna call this variable is ready to submit. And I'm gonna make this variable a number. And I'm gonna use the number zero to mean it's not ready to, su to submit. And the number one for it is ready. And instead of having all of the logic to change the layers, I'm just gonna change the value of this to one or zero. And then I'm gonna use a detect on the value of this variable to determine whether or not it's ready to submit. So let's set that up. I'm gonna add a trigger and let's do a detect on our variable is ready to submit. And we're gonna make two conditions. If, and I'm gonna choose the variable here, if ready to submit, if it equals one, that means yes, ready to submit, then we're going to use all of the logic that we had here. And let's just move it all the way down here because we're not going to have it up in our uh, check buttons, uh, checkbox submits anymore. And then I'm going to add another condition. And this will be is ready to submit if it equals zero, which means not ready to submit. And we'll copy these in here and we'll move these down here. Now, I don't need all of these extra responses in here. And this is going to make sense in a second. But just to make things a little cleaner, I'm just going to remove all this stuff. So now in my detection of is ready to submit, I've got a condition that looks for if it's equal to one. And if so, I'm going to set the opacity of the submit button to 100. I'm gonna change its color to purple and I'm gonna remove the opacity of the click mask to enable me to check it. And if the condition is, or if the variable equals zero, then the opacity goes back to 50% of the submit button, the color goes back to gray and the opacity of the click mask goes back to 100. Now all I need to do is I need to use the assign. 
So in my first checkbox here, detect check one, I'm gonna add an assign under the first condition, which if you recall, it's when both boxes are checked and I'm going to assign to the variable is ready to submit, I'm gonna set it to one and that's it. And let's copy this and we'll put that under the second checkbox. Let's just rename this. Here we go. And then I'm gonna copy this again and underneath the second condition here, I'm gonna paste that, but this time I'm gonna set it to zero. And now let's copy that. We'll paste it under this condition. We'll paste it under this condition and we'll paste it under that condition. And now this makes our logic easier to manage. So let's preview this first of all, everything should be working. And actually what I'll do is I'll turn on the debug. So anytime you want to monitor the value of a variable, you can turn on its debug. And that's if you hover over the, uh, the variable and you click the little ladybug icon, and then you'll get something just showing up here in the, uh, in the top corner. And you can drag that around and position it where you want. Now when I preview this, and you're gonna see as I check, you're gonna see the variable change to one. And if I uncheck things, Right, that variable value just keeps changing. And whenever it hits one, it enables my submit button. So let's say I want to change the state of my submit button to be uh, a different color. Let's say I didn't like that purple and I wanna change it to something else. I only have to change it in one place. Let's rename this, by the way. So that way we have a better idea what's going on. And let's say I wanna change this. Maybe I don't want this to be this purple color. Maybe I want it to be this green color. So there you go, I only had to change it in one place and my submit button is now green. Right now I can't click it, but now I can. There you go, that's how to make a complex condition. Easy as pie. If you run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, please check out the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.